Hello everyone and welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. Today's video is with Ali Abdel and what we'll be doing is diving into how Ali approaches his productivity. We're going to talk about all of his approaches to productivity and how he manages to keep a workload so high up and really dive into some of the methodology he believes in. Before we begin, Ali has got a new live workshop and course out called the Part-Time YouTuber Academy. It's perfect if you're looking to dive into YouTube in 2021 or later this year and really learn about how to take advantage on the platform. You can check out the link in the description. Let's dive into today's feature. So, um, yeah, so, Maybe for those who don't know who you are, Ali, maybe you could give an introduction to yourself. Sure. Uh, so my name is Ali, and I guess these days I, uh, uh, the, I sort of introduced myself as a doctor, YouTuber, and podcaster as like my three main things. Um, been a doctor in the UK for the last two years, taking a bit of a sabbatical from that this year to focus on my other interests. I kind of jokingly call it unemployment, although I've been told that it's, uh, it's offensive to actually unemploy people or to say that I'm unemployed because like self-employment running a business is not quite unemployment, but uh, who knows, I, don't, I, I might get cancelled for that at some point. Um, but on the side, I have this YouTube. channel uh, where I talk about productivity and stuff, and we've done some collabs, uh, Francesco and I, yeah. and I have a weekly podcast where my brother and I discuss life and socializing and just random stuff. Yeah, definitely. What what sort of I'm I'm curious like first question like what sort of uh time frame did you like decide to sort of go on the sabbatical? Did you have like that in mind for a while? Yeah, I I always knew I wanted to take at least one year out of medicine. Uh after your first 2 years of being a doctor in the UK, it's a very there's a very natural career career gap where yeah. a lot of like over 50% of people will take time out of the kind of conveyor belt training system and kind of yeah. maybe go to Australia for a year or, you know, volunteer somewhere for a year or travel around a bit. I was intending to travel the world, but then the whole Corona thing happened. And so mm. I'm kind of just stuck in Cambridge churning out content and yeah, trying to find fulfillment and meaning in life, basically. <laughs> Doing lots of reading, I'm guessing as well. Lots of reading as well. Yeah. Lots of reading. Um, brilliant. Uh, Maybe I'll start with like talking about your t current toolkit because mm. you've hinted at a few apps that you use uh, over time, like Notion and Roam. Maybe you can take us through sort of how the different types of apps you're using at the moment. Yeah, I feel like I am sort of sort of paring down the apps that I'm using because I've, I've, I've realized that as much of a productivity nerd as I am, I'm actually a waste man deep down. Um, <laughs> wait, wait. Idea, I love the idea man? of having like an elaborate productivity <laughs> system, but actually yeah. what I do is fairly simple. So I basically live my life by my calendar. And if yeah. it's not on my calendar, it's not happening. Uh, so I use Fantastic <laughs> Hell as my calendar of choice, although it's basically the same as every other calendar app. Sure. Um, Notion, I probably spend the most time in each day because most of the work involved when running a YouTube channel in a business involves writing. And me and my team, we all just write everything in Notion. And so that is like our home base for absolutely everything. Um, and then I use things three as my kind of personal to-do list. It's a bit annoying that it doesn't have team features because it's very much a personal to-do list, but it's how I keep track of all my projects and tasks and things. I don't look at it as often as I probably should because, I mean, generally I kind of know what I'm doing in a given day based on my calendar. But mm. if I'm at that point where I'm like, okay, I need to offload stuff from my head and then I'll put it into things three because I very strongly subscribe to David Allen's view that our brain is for having ideas, not for storing them. And so mm. anytime I... I have something on my mind, I make sure to write it down somewhere, either in Things or in Notion. So that's basically my three app stack of productivity apps, Fantastical, <laughs> Notion, and Things. Um, yeah. And I use other things kind of from time to time, but those are the main ones. Brilliant. And you mentioned uh, you mentioned a couple of times about how you're using Roam. Is that sort of expanded or decreased in the last couple of months? It's decreased. I haven't, like, I, I really like Roam and I'm on the Believer plan, but um, I kind of want to be the Notion guy because Notion okay. sponsors my videos and Nat Elias is already the Rome guy. And so I want yeah. to be the Notion guy. And so I've been You're... kind of forcing myself to use Notion, even for things where Rome would probably be, be a bit better. Just yeah. A, a, because Notion is free and I have a large student audience uh, and B yeah. because I want to be the Notion guy. Yeah. 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 You do. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good thing. Um, brilliant. So sort of like yeah, the, the toolkits sort of encapsulate with those ones. That's good. And one of the things that I sort of had a question about was, so obviously before the sabbatical, how were you going about balancing both doing f pretty much two full-time jobs with YouTube and um, obviously being a doctor? Yeah, so it, it actually wasn't that hard. Um, I think it was, 
That's, good. That's kind of two aspects to this. Number one is sort of the personal productivity side. And number two is the sort of when you start making money from your YouTube channel, you can then hire a team. And then that changes the game. Yeah. I imagine most people watching this probably aren't to the point where they, they can feasibly hire, hire a team of people to work for them. And so I, I, I guess if we focus on the personal productivity thing, I think one of the main things is realizing that sort of before I used to think of videos as sort of happening one at a time, whereas now I think of it kind of as, uh, you know, as, as, as Tiago would say, uh, the slow, slow burns. So at any moment, we always have like, we've got like 100 and something video ideas in Notion. Maybe 30 of them are in various stages of being cooked. And so even when I have five or 10 minutes here and there, I can bash out Notion and then just sort of make some notes or plan out the script for a video. And in, in, in a way, it's I'm, I'm no longer thinking kind of, let's do one video and then let's do the next. It's more like we've got these, this stream of 30 videos that are being done. And at some point, each of these will get fully cooked. And that just makes it easy to squeeze moments uh, uh, of productivity out of random bits of downtime. Like mm -hmm. I remember when I was at work on night shifts and things, especially during Corona time, you know, things would be a bit quiet. You'd have half an hour, an hour spare. And so I'd log into Notion on the crappy Windows PCs at work. And I would just start, you know, planning out the script for, for the next video. Uh, I also made sure to batch film as much as I could. So if I'm filming, I want to film at least two videos, if not more, in one sitting just because of the sunk cost of setting up the cameras and everything. So I think those are probably the main things productivity system wise uh, that helped me juggle stuff while working full time. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good approach. Um, and when you were, you, you mentioned there about Tiago, but you've uh, were one of the mentors on second brain. How did that go? Did you enjoy that? That was really fun. I was really yeah. worried I wouldn't be good because I was, I, there's that whole imposter syndrome thing. That's like, well, you know, people are looking to me as being a mentor, but, bit of a waste man. My own productivity system isn't perfect. It's very disorganized and messy. And all I care about is the output. Um, and so I was, I was kind of sharing that in our mentor sessions and people seemed to resonate with the sort of not having a picture perfect productivity system. Um, so I quite like that. And over time I became less imposter syndrome-y. And yeah. the, the, the other thing with that is I kind of I think I underestimated just how like the different levels that people are at with their productivity systems. I kind of assumed wrongly that everyone who takes building a second brain will have already, will already be so familiar with like, you know, David Allen's getting things done that, you know, something mm -hmm. like capture or processing a to-do list or organizing it just wouldn't be interesting. And then I was just doing a screen share where I was showing how I capture stuff into things and then how I process it. And people were just asking so many questions because I think, yeah, I, I, I wrongly assumed that people would know that stuff. And that kind of told me that whenever you're making any kind of course or teaching, you actually do have to cater for the beginners, mm -hmm. even if you're charging a lot of money for it, like, like Tiago does. And you, you can't assume that people will have read the same productivity books as you do. Um, a, because not everyone is a productivity nerd. And B, just because what seems obvi obvious to us is often amazing to others, as Derek Sivers mm -hmm. would say. So uh, yeah, just a lot of lessons around that side of yeah. things that really helped with the course. Yeah, it must have been fun for sure. And um, one of the things I was going to ask about, like, how do you go about defining your own productivity? Do you define it by like output or like, how do you go about thinking about at the end of the day, have I been productive? Mm. Yeah, so I kind of, I have in my head this, this productivity equation. Uh, and my productivity e equation is productivity equals useful output divided by time multiplied okay. by enjoyment. Uh, and so output is like the main thing. I want to make sure I'm outputting stuff. I want to make sure the output is useful. So it, it's actually working towards like what I want from life and stuff, because it's very easy to just spin your wheels and I don't know, crank out another video, but actually is that really moving the needle? I want to try and minimize the amount of time that I'm working and I want to maximize the enjoyment. So that's sort of a very vague equation that I use to think about productivity. I think when it comes to the end of the day, um, I, in in the past, I would rarely think today has been a productive day. And I would just have this grumbling sense of dissatisfaction that, oh, well, I guess I could have done more deep work if I'd woken up earlier or whatever. Uh, but recently, I read a blog post um, on this guy called Neil Nanda's blog, where he kind of talked about this exact problem, this kind of grumbling sense of dissatisfaction. And mm -hmm. in that blog post, he said that you can just simply choose to be satisfied at the end of the day. And instead of thinking, oh, I was so unproductive, thinking that was a pretty good day. And yeah. I, I read that a couple of weeks ago. And since then, Every evening, I've kind of been like, oh, that was a pretty good day. And it's yeah. just a slight mental shift, but it makes me feel bit, a lot better about the work that I've done because the work sure. hasn't changed. It's just the story I've told myself about it has. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. And um, like, obviously, now you're not 
uh, you're unemployed. <laughs> um, when the when the next, if there is, I don't know whether you're in like a tier two area or three area. I can't. Remember. It's not uh, the, at the moment. You're tier one. The, the normal can't. ones. The normal your ones. normal ones. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> yeah. But if there is another lockdown, what do you do? You plan on doing something specific during that time? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, so my life is actually not very different to if it, if it would be in lockdown. The only thing is, is that I go to the gym somewhat regularly and I go to town to work in coffee shops and to hang out with yeah. fans, um, <laughs> which I do every, every, every Tuesday. So that, that stuff wouldn't be happening. But broadly, yeah. otherwise, all of, like my entire business involves sitting in front of a computer or a camera and, and speaking, yeah. which is not massively affected by lockdown. So I think if, yeah. there were, if there were another lockdown, I would yeah, I'd just use it as a chance to bash up some more work, have some more fun. I started yeah. playing PlayStation recently as well. Um, oh, I'm watching a video called I Played Video Games for 30 Days. Kind of like Matt Develops, <laughs> you know, I meditated for 30 days, but yeah. me being a waste man. And yeah. so day three today, so I've got a calendar reminder every night at 10 p.m. that I need to stop work yeah. and stop playing PlayStation. So that's oh like actually God. been something yeah. really nice to look forward to. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I probably want to do a bit more of that. That's good. Oh, brilliant. Well, Ali, thanks for coming on. Uh, we appreciate your insights. Um, is Obviously, where can everyone find you after this video today? Yeah, so um, my YouTube channel is probably the main one. If you just search Ali Abdal on YouTube, you'll find it. And that'll have links to all of the other things, the podcast, the courses, the website, all of that fun stuff. Lovely jubbly. Well, thank you, Ali, and we'll talk soon, yeah? Thanks for having me.